Hi, it's Rob Moore here. How to fail in order to succeed. Now, I believe that success is about frequent, hopefully small, failures. Now, usually when people talk about success, they don't talk so much about how to fail in order to succeed. And people talk about getting better at success but they don't talk about getting better at failure in order to be successful. Now, I know you know that if you want to be successful, you need to embrace failure. You know that. I don't need to tell you that. But what I'm going to do in this podcast and this live stream is talk to you not how to succeed better, but how to fail better in order to succeed better and bigger. And I don't know that anyone has really shared it like this before. So I hope you find it useful. Now, also, I'm doing something very special just for this live stream. And that is not only will you get a shout out from me for 500 stars, which is something I've been doing fairly regularly, but also I will give you a ticket to the very special Business Breakthrough Summit at the end of February. So for 500 stars, which is just $5 to me, you will get not only a shout for your business, your brand, your podcast, your book, your Facebook group, uh, your website, but you'll also get t uh, t two tickets, which are about 600 quid when I sell them for Business Breakthrough Summit. Now, I'll tell you a bit more about that event a bit later on because I want to get into the content. But this might be the only time that you'll get the opportunity to do this on this live. And I can see Paul's live streaming. He's actually at that Business Breakthrough Event Summit. You should be watching the event, Paul. Okay, so how to fail in order to succeed. I've got about 15 points that I'm going to bash through. So the first thing is you need to learn to fail small. Let's be honest. No one wants to fail. I get that. It's a paradox. No, you definitely do not want to fail big. And there are some people saying, oh, embrace failure, you know, go fail big, take big risks. No, 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 no. Don't fail big. Fail small. Fail small. Next point, fail often. Minimum viable product, version 1, version 2, version 3, iPhone version 13, 13S, X, you name it. Lots of different versions, lots of small failures. iOS software on the Apple, it, it, it gets updated, it's better than the last one, there's a few bugs that happen, it gets updated again, it's better than the last one, there's a few bugs. So if you think about it, it's very regular small failures. So fail small, fail often, fail fast. If you're going to fail, fail quick. If you're going to get screwed over, get screwed over quick. Because if you fail later and longer and bigger, that's likely to hurt you more. Fail small, fail often, fail fast. The next thing, point four, is everything is a test. And a lot of people are not failing fast, small and often because they're worried about big failures. So they don't do anything because they're worried about the failure. And they see everything as um, absolute or unchangeable, or you can't take it back, or I've got to be perfect and I'm not perfect there, or I'm not going to do anything. Whereas if you see everything as a test, every launch, every pitch, every Facebook video, every marketing campaign, every sales call, everything as a test, if it's not perfect, you can tweak, you can iterate, you can improve, you can create version two, or if it goes really wrong, you can start again or delete and you can go again. Point five, a lot of people talk about getting uncomfortable. I believe there's an, a, a specific way to get uncomfortable, and that is to get comfortably comfortable. No one wants to get uncomfortably uncomfortable. It hurts. It's painful. Human beings are going to avoid that at all costs because we need to because it keeps us safe and makes sure we don't get, you know, top ourselves like a lemming walking off a cliff. So you're not probably going to go and jump into a fire or take massive risks. Only a few that have a, a sort of a, a junky addiction to adrenaline and risk are going to do that. So it's not practical. But if you get comfortably uncomfortable, small steps of discomfort, then you move to higher levels um, of resilience, of grit. Um, uh, and you moved ultimately to things that would have been really uncomfortable a year or a month ago. But because you've just gently increased the discomfort, you kind of don't feel it. I remember my martial arts instructor told me a story of when, um, you know, the, um, in martial arts, some of the Chinese Kung Fu ones, they can jump really high. And he said, in order to do that, what they do is they dig a little hole and they jump in and out of it. 
And then they put an extra T-shirt on and jump in and out of it. And then they put an extra T-shirt on and jump in and out of it. Then they put an extra T-shirt on and jump in and out of it. Then they dig the hole slightly lower and jump in and out of it. And then uh, an extra T-shirt and jump in and out of it. And then slightly lower and jump in and out of it. And they're just, um, you know, it's, it, their, their muscles are ever so slightly incrementally more uncomfortable and more worked. It's not like a dramatic do these huge jumps. And I think risk uh, and failure and success, I think that's a good analogy for it. So we've covered five points so far. I've got about another 12 left. Hope this is useful so far. Remember, not only on this live stream can you get a shout out for 500 stars, your business, your brand, your podcast, whatever it is you're promoting. For You can also get a free ticket to Business Breakthrough Summit, which sell just under 600 quid for two tickets. You can get two tickets for free. So just hit me up with 500 stars. And both of those are yours, but only for this live stream. Okay, next then is um, lots of small mistakes lead to big wins. So instead of looking for no mistakes, you've got to look for small mistakes. Big mistakes don't lead to big wins. Big mistakes lead to big failures. But lots of small mistakes lead to big wins. Now, you're not necessarily intentionally trying to make mistakes. Of course, you're trying to do good. You're trying to get things right. But in the pursuit of doing things good and getting things right, you are going to fail small, fail often, and hopefully fail fast. Um, and continue to test. If you have the testing mindset, not the absolute mindset, you know, as they say, the, the growth mindset, not the fixed mindset, then you're going to uh, embrace small and frequent mistakes in order to um, achieve big wins. Next is then it's a myth that you have to take massive risks. And there's a lot of people, there's a lot of glory about taking massive risks and, you know, all these business TV shows and Netflix series and documentaries all about big risk. I was, I was about to fail. I went 28 million pounds in debt. I mean, the story of Dyson going 20 on million pounds in debt. I was about to lose it all. And then boom, I like a phoenix from the ashes. I rose and like an eagle I saw. No, these are just glorified stories. You don't have to take big risks. In fact, it's wise. Next point to de-risk the downside first. De-risk failure on an epic level. De-risk going bust. De-risk massive breakage and then small and incremental and frequent actions. Everything is a test. Fail small, fail often, fail fast. Okay, when you're trying to do something new, if you transmute experience from what you've already done, you will de-risk failure. So um, when I started buying property, I um, uh, transmuted experience from a business partner into property. Uh, and then when we bought 20 or so properties for us, we started sourcing for others and we transmuted our own 20 property experience into sourcing for others. Then when we had been sourcing for others, we set up a training business. And we transmuted, muted our experience from buying for ourselves and buying for clients into the training business. Then when we had hundreds of properties for ourselves and clients, we transmuted that experience into a letting agency. And so it go- continues and continues and continues. So what we're not doing is starting something new and having to start again and fail again. We're taking our previous incremental failures from all of our other niches and transmuting and carrying some of that experience over into our new venture. So entrepreneurs are wise to try and carry the experience with them rather than starting again, 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 again. Uh, Richard, uh, who's one of my frequent star givers. Hi, Richard. Just wanted to give you a shout out because you give me loads of stars. You're awesome. All right, next then is cross-stream leverage, which again is if you've got property um, portfolio, starting a letting agency is going to be pretty easy, but starting a, um, a, a health retreat or a yoga retreat is going to be quite hard. So um, anything that you've done in your life, can you carry that f- um, experience forward into something else? I call that cross-stream leverage. When you're, going to, when you're starting a second income stream, leverage your first income stream. If you want to fail in order to succeed, why don't you get a mentor and why don't you leverage the, the mentor's failures? Why don't you get vicarious failures, i.e. the failures of others? Because um, if you um, have to blaze the trail yourself, you've got to make all the mistakes yourself because you're at the front, taking all the shots on the front line. Whereas if a mentor has been there and done it and they have trodden the front line and they have blazed the trail, you can um, leverage and get vicarious experience from their mistakes. So use other people's failure. Leverage the failure of successful people in books, audiobooks, podcasts, mentors, masterminds, courses, coaches, etc. Next then is every human being has amazing, limitless but often latent resourcefulness. You are so resourceful. If your kids were about to get kidnapped, if the very thing that you valued and loved in the world was about to be taken away from you, you'd go and knock on everyone's door and do your pitch. You wouldn't even let them close the door until you'd sold your product or raised the money or or, achieve the success that you need to achieve. 
So you've got to unleash this resourcefulness in you. You know, if you're on a reality TV show, if you're in a massive competition, if there's a million quid up for grabs, man, you'd get resourceful. You would have skills and talents and persistence and hustle you never even knew was there. It was just uh, beneath, uh, within or latent in you. It was hiding. Lindsay has said, was meant to give me 500 stars, give me 50. No worries, just add another 450 on and I'll shout you out. Ah, you just have for your business, your brand, your podcast. So Richard and Lindsay, thank you for your stars. By all means, put a link to your product, your service, whatever it is that you're offering and what you do. Okay, next then is get hardcore accountability. Um, When all is said and done, more is said than done. To know and not to do is not to know. And who is the easiest person to lie to? You got it, you. So having a coach, having a mentor, having a competition, um, having, having a bet, having something to lose, um, having downside, um, having sort of pu- making public de- uh, declarations or uh, losing face if you don't go out and achieve your goals and actions, that gives you external hardcore accountability. So you need to game yourself and get accountability outside of yourself because you're the easiest person to lie to. So how can you do that? Well, I listed some of the ways that you can do that, but make sure that you do that so that you'll embrace more failure uh, and you'll put yourself out there more and you'll take a few extra risks. Okay, next then is you've got to see the upside in the failure. Like you would avoid failure if you thought it was all downside, all pain, all embarrassment, all mistake. But in reality, every failure has a balanced upside. You learn, you grow, um, you maybe accidentally iterate forward. The the post-it note was a failed glue. Um, penicillin was a failed, um, or, or rather it was a Petri dish left over. Uh, corn, cornflakes were, again, um, not initial. they were a mistake. It was um, some kind of other ingredient left um, over and, and turned into some other form that created cornflakes. So actually mistakes can end up being massive successes. So if you embrace your failures, you end up getting more successes but you've got to see the upside in them. You know in drumming where you, they hit the rim of the drum, like the clicking sound. Well, one day someone was trying to hit the drum and they missed the freaking drum and hit the rim and thought, wait a minute, that sounds pretty good. Click, 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 we'll do that. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot, uh, the detuned guitar sound. You know, like when you have the muffled sound on the guitar, which is like a, a, a note not being played properly. You know that famous song, Nirvana, smells like teen spirit, that in it, that wasn't a very good impression. Down and out, down and out, down and out. Well, that is, is like, um, it's, it's, it's a bad tune. It's out of tune. It's uh, not playing the, the notes properly. Uh, and that, that sounds absolutely fantastic in rock and metal now. So if the more mistakes you make, as long as they're not massive and epic fails, you can often um, accidentally pivot yourself into success. Damping. So Rick has said it's called damping on the guitar. Well, it's, it's a technique now, but it wasn't a technique when it wasn't a technique. It was a mistake. Howard Kelly, thank you for your 500 stars. You get a shout out for your business, your brand, your podcast. Um, he has um, phoenix-info.co.uk. Kelly Forrester, thank you for your 500 stars. She has a, a, a transformational um, online course. Thank you very much, everyone, for um, giving me your stars. All right. So see the upside in the failure. Embrace the mistakes. Learn from them. See where they take you. See what newness they create. Often, mistakes end up being something even better. Okay. I believe if you see problems and failures as fixes and footsteps, problems and failures as, f- and as f- fuck's sake, <laughs> I'll slow down. Problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. Problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. A problem, a challenge and a failure is merely a fix and a footstep, footstep towards um, a, a better result or, or closer to your goal. Fail small, fail often, fail fast. See problems as f- See problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. See problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. See problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. You got this, Rob. You got this, Rob. Um, All right, a couple more things before we go, because I've got to go out for a park run with my family. And that is fail with gratitude and grace. So the content of this, um, the the fuck, I'm talking too fast. (laughs) The topic of this content on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur, and my live stream on Facebook is how to fail in order to succeed. So fail with gratitude, fail with honor, fail with dignity, fail with grace, 
fail with humility, fail with open-mindedness. Too many people are failing like a bitch, failing like a child. Uh, they, they, you know, they're um, crying, they're getting angry, they're lashing out, they're, or they're beating themselves up, or they're going and hiding in a corner never to show the world themselves again. That is not how to fail like a legend. How to fail like a legend is to fail with gratitude, fail with grace, fail with humility, fail with open-mindedness, fail like a Zen Buddhist monk master. Uh, uh, someone has said I need a coffee. I clearly don't. All right, next then, is failure how the, is how the world judges you? It is easy when it's easy. It's easy when you're successful, when there's a backwind, when things are going your way, and people can see that. And people are often, oh, it's easy for you, or you're lucky, or look at you. But the world actually judges your metal, your grit, your trust, your resilience, your leadership skills. They judge you when you fail, especially when you fail publicly. And if you fail like a child, lash out like a little bitch, like a complainer like a moaner like a defender and a justifier and an angry critic or you go and hide and never show the world who you really are again then you lose and the world just judges you whereas let me remind you and i'm repeating a few things on this live stream because i'm trying to drum it in your brain but if you fail with gratitude with grace with humility with open-mindedness with kindness with persistence with consistency keeping all the doors open never slamming the door on someone because they slam the door on you then the world goes, you are a leader and I will follow you. And even if I'm not ready now to give you money or buy your product or service or partner with you, I will be ready in the future. Or I will tell others, even if it just doesn't work for me. So never shut the doors. Because even if you get rejection from a failure, it might be from the first door, but they might then recommend you or speak highly of you. So keep that door open and you keep other doors open. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can fail to impress. Most people are not impressing when they fail, but you can fail to impress. The world saw that you failed like a legend. They're very impressed with you. Bang, doors open, opportunities come your way. So a lot of people think opportunities come your way when you win and you win big. But in reality, opportunities also come your way when you fail well. So keep all the doors open. Manage your chimp and your emotions and your childlike ego like a legend. Don't react, don't spit. Don't get defensive, don't get aggressive, don't get entitled, and you will succeed because of your failures, in spite of your failures, and with your failures, and not avoiding your failures. So final chance for a shout out, give me 500 stars and you get not only a shout out for your business, your brand and your podcast or whatever it is you want, but also two free tickets to my Business Breakthrough Summit that have sold for 600 quid previously. All right, great. So summary, because people tell me they like the summaries. Um, how to fail in order to succeed. Here we go. Fail small. Fail often. Fail fast. Everything is a test. Nothing is absolute. You can always change, pivot, delete, improve. Get, get comfortably uncomfortable. Uh, lots of small mistakes are the only things that lead to big wins. You do not have to take massive risks. You can de-risk the downside first. When trying something new, transmute exist trans existing experience. So that you've got more cross-stream leverage and you're not starting from the bottom again. You're starting from halfway up the game of snakes and ladders. Get a mentor who's been there, someone who's blazed the trail so you can learn vicariously through their past mistakes and failings. Use your resourcefulness, your creativity, your latent infinite ability to solve problems, to take rejection, to be successful. It's there. It's not in other human beings and not in you. It's there within you. Get hardcore accountability. See the upside in every apparent fail because every failure has an equally balanced upside. And then you'll go and um, seek out more of it. See problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. Got it. See problems and failures as fixes and footsteps. Fail with gratitude. Fail with grace. Fail with humility. Fail with open-mindedness. Fail like a legend. The world judges you not just when you succeed, but when you fail. And not just when you fail, but how you fail. Fail well, my friends. Fail to impress. Keep all the doors open and opportunities will come to you through your failures as well as your successes. So, Zayo Bako, thank you for your 500 stars. Shout out your business, your brand, your podcast, your website, whatever you want. And... Private message me for your two business breakthrough summit, two day event tickets, which are usually 600 quid, which you're getting for free. Andy Lampard, same thing. He's done a shout out. Private message me. You get business breakthrough summit tickets for free. Kelly Forrester, I think you've been to breakthrough success summit. Thank you for your stars. Howard, Howard Kelly, private message me. You get your business breakthrough summit tickets. Christina Diaz, private message me. You get your business breakthrough um, summit tickets. Lindsay Fellows, the same. 
Richard Weiss, you're already there. And if you're watching a replay or you're right at the end, final chance, shout out your podcast, your business, your brand, your website, whatever, by putting it in the comments and private message me for two tickets to Business Breakthrough Summit. Probably um, probably our best business event, I would say. Um, we get a, a huge amount of gratitude and praise for this event. People say that they learn more in this event than they have uh, doing an MBA. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that, like probably a dozen or so, which is pretty impressive. Um, and yeah, we give a lot of content at that event. So if you want multiple streams of leads and multiple streams of income, if you want to start and scale your business, you want to grow your brand, you want to develop a social media strategy, you know, you want low cost and free leads, this is the event for you. She sells seashells on the sea. Sure. See, I can do it. I just speak too fast because I had too much coffee. Right, I've got to go. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And if you reckon this is useful to your friends, your peers, your colleagues, your clients, your community members, please share this. Because I believe if we all took failure with a bit more grace, a bit more humility, humour, let's fail with humour. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. Let's just water off a duck's back. Don't worry. It's okay. I don't take myself too seriously. I can have a laugh at myself. I can self-depreciate. I think that is a great way to handle and um, uh, like uh, embrace failure. Hmm. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Now I've got to go. I've got to park run with the kids. Have a great day. Oh yeah, share the fuck out of this. Everywhere. Everyone needs this shit. You know it. Too many people playing small. Too many people comfortable. Uh, and uh, the comfort is the enemy of greatness. <laughs>